Welcome and aloha. I'm Mark Shklov, the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Today we're going across the sea to the mainland and then across the Rocky Mountains to Denver to talk with Hawaii lawyer Ryan Markham about his personal and professional journey. So let's get started. Aloha, Ryan. How are you? Hey, great. Thanks so much for having me on the show. It's just an honor to be here and I'm a big fan of the show. I've loved all of the, the guests you've had, and it's just humbling to be part of it. You've had so many impressive guests, and, and then now me. So well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to have you. And I want to talk about your journey, Ryan, because a lot of uh, young people in Hawaii who are, who are just beginning their careers think about, do I stay in Hawaii or do I leave Hawaii for the mainland? So let me ask you, you know, you were raised in Hawaii and you went to law school, the University of Hawaii, then you worked for your dad's law firm here in downtown Honolulu. So why did you leave Hawaii for Colorado? That's a, it's a great question. And there's actually kind of several factors um, to the decision. I think, you know, one throughout a lot of my life, um, I, the words of Jim Scott, the former president of uh, Pono School, uh, have played in my mind. And he used to always say, to whom much is given, much is expected. Um, and I've kind of taken that as a, a bit of a personal challenge. Um, you know, I look at my my father, uh, who you mentioned that I worked for, and I look at the amount of opportunity he had versus the opportunities he gave me. Um, and I think the kind of the pressure is self-imposed, really, but there's self-imposed pressure to perform and, and in a way do better. So as I'm sitting around, you know, working in my dad's law firm, um, thinking, well, how am I going to improve upon this or do better than this? Uh, it became, you know, looked like a taller order and task. And not, not that there's anything wrong with becoming Greg Markham, but it, it looked like that was my destiny. And I thought, hey, maybe I should try to see if I could do something else or, or, or what. And I think another part of it is uh, for good, bad, or indifferent, um, I think a lot of local kids, we grow up kind of thinking that to really make it or feel like you're making it, making it on the mainland somehow is like a, I don't want to say a better thing or a bigger thing, because in a lot of ways, it's a lot harder to make it back home. But, um, you know, I, it was, I got to a point where things were very, very comfortable in Hawaii. You know, I was working um, with my father, with uh, his partners who I grew up with as kind of uncles, really. And, um, you know, I was fortunate enough to, to play in a, a band with, um, you know, Justice McKenna, Judge Hiroka, Judge Domingo, Judge Crabtree. And I got very, very comfortable in the Hawaii legal community. So I thought maybe it'd be good to kind of get out of my comfort zone and see if I could grow and, and make it somewhere else where I had sort of no connections and no, you know, no one really knew or cared who I was. So um, I kind of wanted to take that challenge on and and I've been fortunate that it's worked out well so far. So in a way, it sounds like you thought a lot about this and, and you, you wanted to make sure that you could be a success on your own in some other place. And because you had a lot of things going for you in Hawaii, a lot of backers. And, and I guess that's what I'm hearing. And it, it sounds like, well, look, I, let me try to see if I can make it on my own also. Yeah, definitely. You know, I think it's um, that, you know, wanting to, to just improve and get better. And, and not that I wasn't improving. I still had so much to learn in the practice in Hawaii. And, uh, you know, I thank everyone I worked with, um, you know, Kevin Chi being a really just a smart dude and being able to talk to him about things. Uh, Kale Feldman, I worked really closely with, taught me a lot. And then and I learned a lot um, about just sort of the mechanics of motions practice and litigation from uh, Danny Kim and, and Keith Kato, Kato, who are both uh, now named partners at um, Chi Markham and Kato and Kim. So, um, you know, I, I'm really grateful for that experience. And really, I think I couldn't be doing the things I'm doing without that. Okay, well, well let's go to talk about the things you're doing now. You joined the firm of Cottony Attorneys and Consultants. What, what is that firm like? And, who, you know, what attracted you to Cottony Attorneys and Consultants? And you know, where, where, where are you located? What do you do? Yeah, yeah, thank you. It's, so, you know, I, I feel like um, in my, you know, my practice in Honolulu, 
I feel like I had, and we, our firm kind of had sort of this David and Goliath thing where we always felt like we were David, we were going up against bigger firms. And we had, you know, nine, 10 attorneys, but not a huge practice. Um, and so, you know, the, the chance to, I don't want to say join Goliath, but join a place that had a tremendous amount of resources uh, versus what, you know, I was used to doing a lot of things kind of on my own. I, you know, I, certain big cases, I'd be in there, you know, emailing with an army, of, against an army of paralegals and associates and, um, you know, partners. And it's just, you know, kind of myself feeling, feeling like I'm fighting in the breach on my own. So um, having a lot of resources is kind of incredible. And it's, it's awesome. I mean, we, you know, to have the ability to, if we need to put just bodies on a case, you know, the paralegals, uh, associates and partners, um, it's, it's neat, you know, and it, it kind of, it's, it's a good feeling to know that you're really supported and, and you can kind of do anything and, and take on any type of litigation. Um, so that, that was a big part of it. I, I, uh, another thing that drew me to the firm is our CEO, Trent Cotney. I got to interview with him when I was interviewing and um, it ended up just being a great, great conversation. I mean, I think we only started talking shop like really late in the interview, we just started talking story and, you know, he's a really, really cool guy. And, um, I, what I, I was able to recognize in him right away is he's, he's a bit of a visionary and, and kind of a disruptor when it comes to um, the legal community and, and the practice of law. He sees things a bit differently and kind of similar to, to how I do. And I had sort of these, uh, you know, fledgling thoughts about where the practice of law should go and what we should be doing to, better serve our clients and evolving. And uh, Trent had basically articulated all of these things I was kind of feeling and thinking beautifully at me. And I thought, oh, okay, this is, this seems like a cool place to be. So um, yeah, real fortunate to get, uh, get an offer from them and, and take it and, and work, work here. Um, I'm in, so I'm in the Denver office, but we have locations across the country. Um, and I serve, I get to serve Hawaii, Colorado, and Minnesota, which is awesome. Wow. Yeah. So I think Zoom, you know, Zoom sort of taught us that you can work from anywhere. And uh, I've been fortunate enough to retain quite a few of my Hawaii clients. And I can appear, you know, in court for them, um, you know, arbitrations and stuff so far. It's been pretty somewhat seamless to do it via Zoom. Um, I think as we transition, hopefully, if we can, into more in-person stuff, then the plan is to be coming back and forth a lot more, which you know I'm, I would love to do because obviously Hawaii is always going to be home and love seeing everyone and being there. So it's kind of neat. I have an opportunity to practice in a lot of different jurisdictions. So, so you, you actually have you know, retained your connections professionally with Hawaii. And 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 you're, you're you're licensed in Hawaii, obviously, and you're licensed in Colorado, and also in Minnesota. Is that right? Yeah, Minnesota too. Yeah. Uh, all right. So you can represent across the nation, and and because of, I mean, and actually, in a way, because of the COVID situation, uh, you're able to do it really uh, better than previously. It, it sounds like. Yeah, definitely, definitely, and I. And I you know, I didn't think I could at first. I, you know, I think the the um, one of the silver linings of the pandemic is that we realized, wait a second, we can do this. We can work from anywhere. Um, and you know, I actually not even just the three jurisdictions I am licensed in. A lot of uh, contractual, you know, a lot of construction contracts have arbitration provisions, and in a lot of jurisdictions, you're allowed to arbitrate there without being licensed. So. So I've found myself practicing in all kinds of uh, places, and it's been nice. It's been cool. Okay, and and so you mentioned uh, uh, construction law. That that's that's your focus. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. So um, I, you know, I started my 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 dad obviously does a lot of insurance defense work, a lot of personal injury defense, um, and I had started initially doing that with him, and I, I think that's a really good. Uh, you know, the insurance defense stuff, the personal injury defense, it, it really does teach you how to litigate. You take a lot of depositions. There's a lot of motions practice and stuff. Um, and, I, and I was fortunate I got to uh, have the experience to, you know, handle a lot of those types of cases and, and may, you know, kind of take the lead on, on some of the more insignificant ones. Not, not that there's any, an insignificant case, but 
you know, some of the soft tissue rear enders and stuff. I got to sort of uh, cut my teeth on, so to speak. And then um, Kali Feldman and Danny Kim from the firm, um, you know, had a, mostly a construction practice. And as that work picked up, you know, from 2015 and on, or maybe even before that, um, I was fortunate enough to be able to work closely with them in the construction litigation group of the firm. So, so you drew a lot from your Hawaii background uh, into your present location with Cottony. And is, is Cottony made mostly construction law, that type of thing? Yeah, so the, the firm used to be called uh, Cottony Construction Law. Actually, when I joined, that's what it was called. Um, you know, the firm has done a good job of being able to serve sort of everything that uh, construction companies would need, right? So we'd have these clients that needed help with, with employment law issues, tax, business stuff. So we got, you know, we have kind of vast uh, practice areas now. We have groups that can handle sort of everything a, a construction company would run into, including immigration and, and you know, um, business structuring and tax and, and all that stuff that's uh, that's all over my head. It's much smarter people than I am. But um, so it's neat. It's neat to be able to, you know, one, be a one-stop shop for all of our clients. And and, with well, the well, you know. and I, I noticed that there's, a you, you know, Cotney has a lot of offices all, all around the world. And so it's construction law and international legal topic. Is that, is that am I correct in that finding yeah. that out? Yeah, I think, you know, yeah, obviously it varies from country to country and jurisdiction to jurisdiction. But I mean, since, you know, since the the advent of, of tools, really, man's been building stuff and uh, needing to get disputes with building, building things or, or even just setting up uh, projects and stuff uh, together. So, um, yeah, we, we've been we're able to serve a lot of different countries. Um, I don't have too much exposure to that, but I, I was fortunate enough to be looped in on some things. We have uh, um, uh, Barcelona or a Spain uh, presence, and there's a large Spanish company that wants to do a big project in Texas and maybe Southern Colorado. So I was, you know, got to be looped in on that because um, I'd be helping with Colorado stuff. And so it's just kind of neat to see, you know, I, I'm, I'm not totally involved, but just tangentially hearing all the neat things happening with the firm across the world. Um, and in addition to the legal side, we have a consulting arm, Cotney Consultants, and we have a lobbying, Cotney Lobbying. And we're able to sort of leverage both of those for information. Um, I find our lobbying group to be very helpful. As part of my practice, I do OSHA defense work. And, you know, figuring out where the Biden administration is going with regard to OSHA, and then obviously our employment law groups wanting to know what they're going to be doing with a lot of employment issues. So having that uh, lobbying arm that's, you know, in D.C. and can give us all the information, it's really helpful. I got to be on a call recently with uh, Senator Roger Marshall from Kansas, who gave us some great insights. And so it's, it's neat to have access to that, you know. So what, what, you know, is the major issue facing the construction law field caused by the COVID pandemic nowadays? What, what, yeah. what, what does that look like? Well, you know, the, the huge thing we're, we're dealing with, and it looks like we'll be dealing with for a while, is just material, a uh, shortage of material pricing. Um, it's, you know, I hear it's going to get better, but, uh, but, you know, with with most things, the prices of stuff, it's quickly to rise and very slow to fall. Um, but with, yeah, with COVID, I mean, we our firm put together uh, a kind of a list of things that contributed to our material current material shortage and material price increase issues and uh, pretty much all of it sort of this force majeure you know type stuff oh, right yeah sure fires and floods and you know covid and um you know you name it so um you know in that regard the legal battles we're seeing is hey we're having to if there isn't a material price or material shortage provision in the contract already which you know, all of the new contracts we have our clients enter have some language addressing that. Um, but if the the project was ongoing when the pandemic hit and this issue happened, we're having to lean into these force majeure clauses and provisions. And you know, it's it's hard for everyone because the owners, the developers, you know, they had their their pro formas and their they were going to pay this much for their structure or whatever they were getting. 
And now the price has increased tremendously. The, the delays caused by not having material available, um, you know, now on the contractor side, you know, in some cases having to, to eat some of the material costs um, or if they're used to making good margins on the materials, not being able to do that. So it's really impacting business and, you know, hopefully it can, it can calm down. Yeah, and, and I guess, I mean, that opens up the really, I mean, it was always, force majeure was always in the law, but I can see now with COVID, it's, it's much, much greater, much bigger. Um, no. Now, I want to I want to go back. You, you mentioned that you were in a band in Hawaii with a bunch of judges and various other yeah. people. And and I, 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 I you know, I, I under I, I believe you're still connected with music. What, what and that connects you with Hawaii. So what's that about? What? Yeah. You know, um, I so I, I in college, I did a lot of so I played football in college uh, here in Colorado and. And I also did a lot of music um, stuff. I was in the acapella group, uh, although it's hard to tell now. Um, I did a lot of uh, musicals and uh, choral work and stuff. I uh, had, had, had a band. Um, so music's always been a big part of my life. When, you know, I think when law school hit and I started kind of working, I, I gotten away from that. And within maybe the last three years, I think three years ago, I uh, was real fortunate. Um, Rhonda Griswold, um, Irene Anzai, Gail Cosgrove, they do the Hawaii Woman Lawyers musical every year. And I got, somehow I got, I forget how that worked, but I got enlisted to be in the Hawaii Woman Lawyers musical and had a lot of fun doing that. And that kind of got me back into the, the music scene as far as the legal music scene goes. And then uh, David Hayakawa and my law school classmate, Catherine Lowenberg, uh, put they put together a show called Rock for Justice, which uh, benefit, has charitable um, show, and got to play with you know the, a lot of these judges and, and other lawyers uh, in their shows. Several shows we've had, so that's kind of you know, come back to music for me. I, I asked you to bring your ukulele today, and you brought that. Oh, you got, you yeah, got with you? And, I do. And, I'm gonna. Uh, so, do you have a song that you could? Uh, Thing that reflects your feelings about Hawaii? Yeah. Okay. So, um, <laughs> sure. And let the sandbagging begin. You know, we've had a lot of fires here on the mainland. This the smoky air, but I'll try my best. Um, this this song, um, a Hawaiian song uh, I really like is called Mauna Loa. And I like just kind of the falsetto. And my uh, grandparents love the song too. And they're a big part of my connection to Hawaii being, you know, Hawaii. Uh, people their whole lives so um yeah i, I play monologue okay. if you'd like please please take it okay You've maintained your connections. You you know you left Hawaii, but you've made. I see you maintain your collections. And I mean, what what sort of advice would you give to young lawyers thinking about this? I mean, thinking young Hawaii lawyers. Okay, 
And yeah. what kind of advice would you give them? Well, I mean, I think, you know, first and foremost, I think, you know, when you grow up in Hawaii, Hawaii, it goes with you everywhere you go, right? That aloha spirit and, and that, um, you know, heart you have. Don't, don't ever lose it and, and keep it with you because it's, you know, in some respects, it's the practice of laws is less cordial, right? It's a bigger, bigger sea, so to speak, and, and you don't run into the same people all the time. But don't uh, lose sight of who you are and what your values are and how you want to practice law, um, one. And, you know, I always think um, of that slogan, don't mistake my aloha for weakness. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I think you can still be cordial and, and professional and, and, and civil while still being firm and advocating for your client. Um, as, as far as, you know, the lawyers who, who want to make that, that jump and leap, I'd say you definitely can. Um, the, the practice of law is, is kind of this, you know, each jurisdiction has its own quirks and rules of procedure and case law and stuff. But by and large, um, it's all the same skill sets. It's all the same, you know, kind of everything you do. So, you know, don't be intimidated by, by uh, the size of, of cases or firms or any of that stuff. Um, you know, you can do it. And, and I found actually, you know, for every, every lawyer I've run into here that's, you know, backed by a, a massive international firm too, um, then has, you know, write a 20 page demand letter to you with 50 cases cited. And, you know, they probably put eight associates on. Uh, for every one of those guys, there's like 10 uh, people that, you know, are no better, or if not maybe significantly worse than the lawyers I went up against in Hawaii. And I think, Part of that is the economics of practicing in Hawaii. You know, if you're not good, whatever that means, if you're not good, it's hard to make it. You're, you're really, it's really hard to make it as, um, as a lawyer in Hawaii if you're not gifted. I think for you know, a couple of reasons, the economics, like I mentioned, and then word gets out quicker. You know, hey, you know, this person, that person's not uh, up, up to snuff. So, you know, the top tier construction lawyers um, in Hawaii, I think could go up against uh, construction lawyers from anywhere in the world, really, in my experience. Um, and so, you know, that's, that's, it was cool realization I had when I think, you know, sort of my first big hearing here, I'm like, hey, wait a second, I, you know, this isn't, this isn't any different. And, um, you know, I think it's a testament to the Hawaii legal community and, and how we practice and, and um, yeah, so. So now, now and just, pulling this all into your music too has that has your ukulele and your hawaiian music helped you in this journey you know it, it has and i i really only so i started playing on like facebook and stuff uh when lockdown started um and i really wasn't i would do the shows you know with uh hawaii women lawyers and rock for justice but other than that i wasn't playing or performing at all so on one, on one hand, it helped kind of keep my sanity throughout the pandemic and just feeling that connection to home, you know, feeling that connection to the culture, the people, um, and, you know, through the music has been really helpful, um, you know, and going more in, I played a lot of classic rock stuff all through college and getting more into the actual Hawaiian music's been really nice and just, you know. Um, so let, let, me, let me ask you, do you have a song to sing about your new home? in the Rocky Mountains that uh, you you could share? Yeah, I'm sure, oh, I, I probably should have learned uh, John Denver's Rocky Mountain High, given the um, title of the show. But, uh, <laughs> you know, one a, song, a Hawaii song that I play here when, when I'm thinking of home and all the, the people I love back home is a Kalapano one. And I, I, I could play that one. Is that is that okay? Yeah, take it, take it. Okay, all right. So... Here we go. Once I thought she'd really need me. All those silly games really hurt too. Oh, 
sheets gone and my skies are gray. Left my heart in a memory and made me blue. Thank you. Now, you mentioned your face. You, you mentioned your Facebook, and I saw a quote from Tim Tebow on your Facebook. I want to put that up on the screen. It says, "When you die, there's going to be a tombstone. It's going to have your name. It's going to have the year you're born and the day you die. In between, there's going to be a dash, and that dash is going to represent everything you did in your life, good and bad. That's how you're remembered." And then Tim Tebow ends with, what do you want your dash to represent? Well, let me ask you, what do you want your dash to represent? I think a lot of times, you know, we, and when I say we, I mean me, um, I get caught up so much in being successful and, and, you know, the practice of law is very competitive. I mean, you're litigating, you want to win, win, win. But I think when I really sit down and, and think about how I want to be remembered, what I want that dash to represent, I really want people to remember me as someone who was very helpful and had a lot of love for everybody and the community and Ohana and friends and, and everyone. Um, and, you know, I think that's, to me, that's more important than really anything is making sure I positively impact and, and touch lives and you know, let people know they are loved and supported and seen and all of those great things, you know. So that's something uh, beyond legal practice, although it can combine with legal practice and it can be part of your legal practice. And that's yeah. good. That, uh, that's a nice sentiment. Yeah, definitely. I think, have, you know, having compassion for your clients and, you know, the situation they're in, um, that, that helps a lot. I think that giving them that aloha can go a long way. Ah, okay, that's cool. Aloha. So aloha plays a part in your practice and uh, you're, you, you become a human lawyer, uh, not just a lawyer. Uh, that, that's good, good advice. I like that. Now, you know, uh, I want to thank you. We're at the end of our program, but I understand that you have a song to close out this Law Across the Sea program. I, 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 I do. Um, and... and you know, I'm well, hoping. Take us out. Oh, okay, I'm hoping this could be the theme here, so of the show. So. On love across the sea, marched clouds waiting for me. He understands the laws of man and watches the trends of jurisdictions on law. Across the sea, March love hosts patiently. He dresses fly our Asia guy, international law. He's an expert. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, thank you for that. That, that, that'll, that. I guess that will become our theme song. Oh, <laughs> thanks for having me. Uh, okay, okay, Ryan. Well, you know, uh, have a good time in the Rocky Mountains, and you're, you know, I'm glad you've maintained your your Hawaii connections in so many ways. And so, really good to talk to you. Good to hear you. I love your songs. Take care. Aloha. Thank you. Thank you so much. Aloha. <laughs>